Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mount Olive family. Good morning, everybody logging in and joining us for our devotion. I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for uh, the Word of God, which gathers us here this morning. I'm thankful for a God who loves us so much that he sent his son to redeem us. And I am thankful that you are joining us this morning. So good morning, everybody. Uh, good morning to those of you who are joining us maybe later in the day, maybe who are watching after this devotion, uh, after the live part anyway. I'm so happy to be with you. I'm happy to gather around God's word with you this morning. So we are going to continue in our walking through the Psalms. So today we are going to be in Psalm 3. Psalm 1, 2, today we are in 3. So I'll go ahead and get you, uh, I'll encourage you, if you have your Bibles with you, to go ahead, turn to Psalm chapter 3. And I want to ask you, your your question for you this morning is, what's the longest that you have ever run from start to finish? It can be uh, half a mile, it can be a mile, uh, maybe you've ran something pretty insane, like a 5 or a 10K or a half marathon or a full marathon. So what is the longest that you have run from start to finish in one as far let's call it one session, you know, so we're not going to say like a week. We're not going to say uh, over the course of a day. What is the longest that you have run from start to finish? I think the most that I ever ran was like a mile and a half. So not not big numbers by any means, but oh, man, look at this. Yeah. So Katie has ran 17 miles. That's insane. Debbie's ran a marathon. Hey, God bless you two. That is incredible. Anne's at about five miles. Uh, my wife, want to say, want to say it was just about a year ago, maybe a year and some change, but she ran a half marathon at Camp Luther, and she uh, that was something she was training for <laughs> pretty much all year, and she crushed it. So I was really proud of her. Still am. So what's the farthest that you have run in one sitting or? one session rather not a sitting you can't sit down and run so we are going to be in psalm 3 now the reason i wanted to ask you about how far you have ran is because here in this psalm david finds himself literally on the run and he's not on the run from his enemies he's not on the run from god he's not on the run from Anybody that you would take a first guess at, he is actually on the run from his son, Absalom. So his son, Absalom, is trying to take over. His son wants to be the next king of Israel. And the only way that he can do that, in his mind, is if David dies, if my dad dies, then I get to take over. I get to be king. So this is where David finds himself literally on the run as he is fleeing from his son Absalom. So here we go. Psalm chapter three. A Psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. From the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. So David writes this psalm in fear. He writes this psalm in fear, not only fear of his life, not only fear of uh, what's going to happen if Absalom or if any of his other enemies or the enemies of Israel capture him or if they happen to run into him uh, while he is fleeing. He writes it in fear, but ultimately he writes this psalm in confidence. Now, it may not sound like it. It may not sound like this is a whole lot of confidence in the psalm because David is giving us a picture of of this snapshot into his life, but throughout this entire psalm, David is confident because he is trusting God. Like right here, when it says in verse four, I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and I sleep and I wake again because God sustains me. 
God sustains me. I, I can lay down, I can wake up, and I can do that in peace because I know that God is the one who is protecting me. I know that God is the one who is taking care of me. I know that God will not deliver me until it is his time to pass away. So even with all of this going on, even with David being persecuted by his enemies, even with David being persecuted by his own son, who wants the throne, who wants to be king of Israel, David has not lost confidence. He's not lost his faith. He has not lost his hope in the Lord. And I think that's a beautiful uh, testimony. And I think it's a beautiful example for you and me today, because while we may not find ourselves exactly in David's position, I'm sure that there's something in all of our lives, individually, maybe even collectively, that we feel like we're running from. Whether it's certain responsibilities, maybe it's expectations from somebody else, maybe it's the the image of who we're supposed to be or how we're supposed to be living our lives, and maybe it's putting us on the defensive or the evasive, and we're trying to run and we're trying to get away from it, but we have confidence in God. We have confidence in God because, well, he did everything for us. He did everything for us to secure our salvation by sending Christ to the cross. And instead of Absalom pursuing David, Jesus pursues us even harder and further and more lovingly. And he pursues us so much that he would go to the cross for us, that he would take our blame, he would take our sin, and he would take the price that we have earned for him, and he would pay it out of his love, out of his great love for us, for you and for me, and we have our confidence in him. Yes, the world, and there's going to be things in our lives that pop up. There's going to be seasons of our lives where we feel like we are just being cornered and that nothing is going right, but we have confidence and we have trust in God because we know that he sustains us and we know that he loves us, and most importantly, we know that he has redeemed us. So church, I invite you to join your hands and hearts with me in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning that you protect us. Lord, while there's things in our lives that are uh, pursuing us and trying to drive us further away from you, Lord, you pursue after us. You draw closer to us and you drew closer to us by sending Jesus into this world to be with us, to live with us, to spend time and do life with us with us. Lord, you sent him to the cross to pay for our sins. You sent him to a cross to die, to redeem us, to act as that ransom, that final and perfect offering for you, that we could be reconciled to you, that we would no longer have to fear death. We would no longer have to fear uh, the consequences. We would no longer have to fear uh, what happens after we take our final breath, because everyone who has faith in you knows that when we take our last breath here, we take our first breath in heaven and in paradise with you. And Lord, uh, we just ask that you continue to bolster and strengthen your family, your faith, your our faith in you and your church, that we would go out and preach the message that you would have us preach, that is, your son sat as a sacrifice, your son as a final redemption for the entire world. And Lord, it's this prayer and the prayers that we have in our hearts that we lift up to you today. And all God's people said... Amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Don't forget to hit that share button so we can continue to reach out and engage and connect people to Jesus. We want to wish you a very blessed Thursday. We invite you to join us for worship either tonight or this upcoming weekend, Sunday morning or in person or online, and we will see you next time. So y'all take care and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.